at curious at nine years old, you've got sources who know to call you when something goes down. How do you go about cultivating sources at age nine? So the vandalism stories I reported on were a huge help because I already had goodwill in the town because nobody else was reporting these things. Another thing I also did was I printed out business cards. And before I had business cards, I just give people my number. But I would go to every business in my town. And I was like, if you ever have a story idea or anything's going on in town, please call me. And that, you know, it takes a bit to build that up. I went in every week consistently for a few months before I started actually getting calls. Um, I, let me think, where else, what else did I do? Oh, um, like people walking, I would just go up to them and I would ask them if they had any story ideas. I would give people my business cards, that type of thing. And people come to know you and they say, oh, it's Hildy, we want to tell her what's going on and not, uh, oh, Hildy's coming, run, I don't want to be in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of both. <laughs> sure, <laughs> that sounds that sounds fair. Uh, and then, so you had this this huge story brings um, what national attention, right? I mean, it's, it's right. almost the equivalent of going viral, I would think. Uh, yeah, I didn't um, realize a lot of that stuff was going on at the time because, again, I'm not really on social media. Um, it was just my sister running it at that point, and I kind of knew there was some commotion because I think my parents were arguing about it um, because the ne the attention I received at first was like really negative but I, I didn't I didn't really understand the scale of it all until people were wanting to interview me which was very confusing for me because I was the person interviewing other people why would people want to interview me so I didn't fully understand it at first so you've become you've become the story rather than the chaser the story. <laughs> yeah which you know a court like seven-year-old or what nine-year-old me knew that was like the number one real rule of journalism is don't become the story and I became the story I was like this cannot be good but um <laughs> everything ended up working out and then of course there's a bit of a backlash I know you know everybody's brave online when they're writing their comments um and they don't they don't have to look you look you in the eye but they have thoughts and opinions about whether or not a nine-year-old should be investigating uh, a murder uh, and you, you have a, a statement that the esteemed audience could go and view that you made. Um, what did you say to those people? So I got, like you said, I got a lot of backlash immediately. You know, people telling me I should be having tea parties and playing with dolls and a little girl should not be in those situations. But I made, um, I made a YouTube video responding to a lot of people's comments and basically saying that I wasn't going to back down no matter what people said about me. And I think the main reason I really did it at the time is because I have two little sisters and I did not want them to see me being pushed around by a bunch of like adults online. So it was really important for me to set a good example for them. Gotcha. Uh, and then, so um, when do you begin to make the rounds? Cause you start, uh, at some point you, you start talking with Christine Amapur and by the end, you've got blurbs on your book from, from her, from, uh, Keith Oberman, from Hillary Clinton, if anybody's heard of her, <laughs> lots, of, <laughs> lots of big time folks have, have noticed what you're up to. When does this start to become the case? I'm not sure for me, I know it was a, like a buildup, but for me, it really just happened all at once because like you said, I'm not on social media. I wasn't really looking at this stuff. Like I did the interviews because, you know, it was fun for me to you know go back to New York with my mom and do these interviews. That was always fun because I got to see all my friends from New York and everything. Um, but it wasn't, I don't know. I don't think I fully soak it in at the time. It's a thing like a month later, I'll look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that happened. Um, but at the time, you know, I stay off social media. I try to stay pretty level about things. And so um, other than the paper, what what uh, what hobbies have are you doing at, at nine years old? At nine, I was, I mean, I was playing with Barbies. I was having tea parties. I had, I have, a, I had a lot of stuffed, I still, you can see them back there. I have, I had a lot of stuffed animals. I would have tea parties with all my stuffed animals. They're all very elaborate. I was doing all of the normal kid things. I was doing what everybody was criticizing me for not doing. I was still doing all of it. I was just <laughs> doing other things too. <laughs> 
So to all of those haters online, you will have tea parties, but you will also investigate crimes and whatever else you feel like doing. Yeah, I got criticized a lot by people telling me I should be playing with Barbies, but I played so much Barbies until I was too old to play Barbies. But I was just, I was just doing more than that. <laughs> is there an age that's too old for Barbie? What was that? Is, that? is there an age you think that's too old for Barbie? I'm hoping not, because if there was, it would definitely be below the age where I stop playing Barbies. <laughs> I've got my Batman action figures up here behind me and a whole bunch more over in the corner. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that I'm still playing with them. <laughs> but now I have a son, so we, we play with them together. 